What's going on guys? Welcome back to another round of my LBA battles in the LBA things. This is the Lithio battle round 5 battle. Before I get into that, I'm going to go and talk about my round 6 battle because it doesn't have a battle code. I did end up winning it. I won it 4-0. Choice Band and Diggersby put in all the work. That's basically all there was to do. It was against uh, Chris, who is a good friend of mine in the LBA. So it was it was nice to battle him. It was really bad that uh, I think I think there was a little bit of hacks that mattered, but I don't know about how much of it mattered. But it was still bad that I had hacks that mattered. Um, but today, my round five battle, I'm going up against Sancho Bogut, who has the insane wall core of Mega Slowbro and Chansey. Now, if you know anything about anything, you know that Mega Slowbro combined with Chansey makes you want to shit yourself. It's insane how good it is. But then he also has Garchomp, Victini, Togekiss, and Mian Zhao. Now, Sancho Bogut is no longer in the LBA, which really upsets me, but I mean... He has to do what's best for you. I totally understand. If you're if you can't get into it, you can't get into it. I don't I don't blame him whatsoever. Just as long as he's uh just as long as he'll be coming back eventually, I'll be happy. So finding a way to deal with the Mega Slowbro and Chansey was really difficult, honestly, but I had a Diggersby and Choice Band and Diggersby does outspeed both of them and can do a lot of damage. So that's what I brought. I also brought Blastoise, uh Amoongus, Slowbro, Hydreigon, which was which was a really weird set. It was uh max special attack, max attack with a choice scarf because uh, all of his potential choice scarfers could outspeed my high dragon, even if I was timid choice scarfs. I was like, why would I even run any speed investment at all? So I just maxed out the other two and uh, slapped on a choice scarf. I also brought my Mega Scizor for the first time. I believe the first time. Might be the second time. I'm not really sure. I didn't really like Mega Scizor. I drafted it just because it was uh, it was there, and it's a decent Mega, but I didn't even intend to draft a Mega in the beginning. So it's, it's, it's really whatever. But, um... Starting off this battle, it was really hard to choose what I was going to lead off with because I figured that he would want to lead off with either his Mian Xiao or his Slowbro. He ends up leading off with his Mian Xiao while I lead off with my Blastoise. I figured I could eat up any one hit that either one of those could do to me if he wanted to go for a U-turn, a high jump kick, whatever, and I could just fire off a Scald and hopefully get a burn on his Mian Xiao. But it turns out, sorry about that, I dropped my phone. Uh, it turns out he just goes for the U-turn, goes into his Togekiss, and I get a Scald off, and it does about 15%, maybe. And he goes for an Air Slash, which is kind of kind of unfortunate because I do flinch. I am Assault Vested, so it didn't do a whole, whole lot of damage. So I wasn't, I wasn't that worried about it. He's then going to go into his Chansey as I go for an Ice Beam. And uh, that's going to do absolutely piss-poor damage because there's nothing that uh, Blastoise can do to it. Uh, I didn't really want to lose Slowbro. Uh, not Slowbro. Blastoise just yet. So I go into my Choice Scarf High Dragon, and uh, he switches out. And goes into his Victini. Now, this was a really big risk on my part. I had to see if he was Choice Scarfed. I didn't think he would be. I thought he was Choice Scarfed um, Mian Xiao. So, I just go for a U-turn. I get off a lot of damage. It was a crit. And then I go into my uh, Blastoise. I figured if he was going to go for a U-turn, he would do it right here. Or if he was going to go for a Bolt Strike, he could do that as well. So, it was it was kind of a it was kind of a give and take. We both went for U-turns. And uh, now he's going to go into his Mian Xiao. Who is scarfed? He's done only U-turns so far, except for Bla except for Chansey, which you know that's a really good strategy to have, especially whenever you have a lot of pivot Pokemon that can live hits. So I went for a Scald right here, trying to get a burn on his Mian Xiao. When he goes into Slowbro, he eats it up like it's nothing. I knew I outsped. I knew I did, so I fired off a Dark Pulse, and that did a lot of damage for not having any investments in Special Attack. I don't think I did. He goes for a Scald. And that right there shows what Assault Vest can do. I live the Scald, and I get to fire off another Dark Pulse on this Chansey. Now, Chansey's going to eat up like it's nothing. Like, that's not a problem. I don't know why it, it would have ever been a problem, but it wasn't. I'm going to go for a Scald now, and I was hoping to get a burn, but I didn't. He goes for the Seismic Toss, knocking out my Blastoise. Now, this was the ideal situation that I wanted going into this battle. I wanted to be able to bring in my Diggersby on one of his walls, and knock it out with a return. The only way that Chansey could have lived from that range if he was max defense, max special defense. I don't think he would be with a mega slowbro or with a regular slowbro around. So he does have scald on his slowbro. All slowbro, all mega slowbros have scald. I can live one. So I figured, you know what? I'm going to outspeed. I might as well get off a return while I can. He doesn't have the stat boost yet, so that does a lot of damage. And then he goes for a side shock. Knocks me down to below half, and then this second return is going to knock out the Mega Slowbro as well. So his insane wall core just went down to a Diggersby. I was, I was ecstatic when that happened. That was probably my proudest moment I've ever had in Pokemon. 
Because, you know, Diggersby is a normal type. I love normal types. So after all of that, he's going to go into his man shell. Coming in, wanting to get a knockoff so he can knock off my choice scarf, which, honestly, if I could have lived that, it would have been really, 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 really bad for him. Because then I could switch up my moves and go for quick attack, which I don't know if it would have been worse for him, but he would have lost his Mian Shao if I had lived it. I don't know if I could live it. I don't know. But I go for the Trick Room because I want to outspeed things with my Slowbro. And that's really hard to do because, you know, Slowbro is kind of uh, slow. So he's going to go for the Roost right here. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to drop all my feathers and I'm going to get my health back. So I'm going to go for another Ice Beam. And uh, it's going to do a decent amount of damage, but it's not going to be enough to do it KO it by any means necessary. He's going to go for a Dazzling Gleam. And that does way too much damage, and I need this slow bro for that freaking, um, for the Garchomp, along with the uh, Manchow. So I go into uh, my freaking Amoongus, which I thought he was going to go for another Dazzling Gleam, but he goes for an Air Slash, I guess predicting the Amoongus. I don't know if he did, or if he was just like, you know what, might as well. And uh, he's going to go into his Garchomp. As I go for the Spore, and uh, I was like, he likes to run Swords Dance Garchomp. I know he likes to. So he's probably got the Lum on it. He does, in fact, have the Lumberry. And uh, I was like, you know what, but that's fine. Because if he sets up a Swords Dance, I can actually put him to sleep. The Twisted Dimensions do return to normal. That is a huge factor right there. He does set up the Swords Dance predict predicting the switch out, which I, I, I kind of thought he would. So I went for the Spore again. And I'm like, you know what, this is perfect. If I can get him down to enough health, to where Diggersby can come in and kill him with a quick attack, I'll be one happy camper. So I know that he's going to be asleep for at least one turn. The chances of him getting a first turn wake up are like slim to none. And it just, if he had gotten a first turn wake up, it would have been really, really bad for me. But I could have dealt with it. I just wouldn't have liked to. Because, you know, uh, I do have the Choice Scarf Hydreigon, which would outspeed. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep firing off Giga Drains until he wakes up and then kills me with an Earthquake. That's basically my whole entire plan. But um, I was kind of hoping he would wake up right here so I could bring in Hydreigon to get a kill because Hydreigon hasn't seen the field yet. And to be 100% honest, I don't know if Hydreigon will. Actually, you know what? I'm going to tell you this right now. I do not keep Hydreigon for long. I, in fact, just uh, traded Hydreigon to uh, D-Train. Shout out to D-Train for uh, actually recording all of these videos for me. Thank you. And uh, I got Feraligator for it. So I don't keep Hydreigon for long. So <laughs> after... After he goes to the Earthquake and knocks on my Amoongus, I go straight into this thing. I go for a Dark Pulse, and it's not going to do anything to this Togekiss whatsoever. So I'm going to switch out my Hydreigon and go into my Mega my uh, Scizor, I believe. Yep, my uh, my Scizor, because I can eat up an Air Slash, and the chance of him predicting that and going for a Flamethrower right there were, like, hardly anything. So I'm going to Mega Evolve, and I'm going to go for the Bullet Punch. Now, what I, I believe I was 228 HP, 228 Defense, and then the rest in Attack, Max Attack. So I go for the bullet punch. I get the crit. He said it didn't matter at all, but if he was defensively invested, it did matter. So I don't know if he was. I I, I don't know. I couldn't tell honestly. But now he's going to bring in Victini, and I don't need I don't need Scizor anymore now that his Togekiss has gone down. So I'm going to go for a bullet punch, get off a little bit of damage. He's going to go for a bolt strike. Now I thought, I thought that I could live that, but he got a crit. So I was like, you know what? That sucks, but it's whatever. So now I'm going to go back out into my choice scarfed Hydreigon. Knowing I can outspeed, and I'm going to fire off a Dark Pulse. Now, he's going to switch into the Garchomp. I think he went to sack off Garchomp right here. I did not know if I could win. At this point in time, I had no idea if I was able to win. I thought that he was going to win. He's going to go into his Mian Shao. I predicted a knockoff, so I stayed in and went for a Dark Pulse. He actually went for a High Jump Kick, knocked out High Dragon. So that really sucked. It really, really sucked. But I'm going to go into Slowbro. Now, here was my whole thought process. He's going to go for a high jump kick. I'm going to fire off a Scald. And if I got the burn, which I did, it really, really helps me because now I can live another high jump kick. After I got the burn, I had to play around with whether I wanted to switch out. But I, in fact, went for Trick Room. I said, you know what? Slowbro can knock out his last two Pokemon as long as he outspeeds. So I set up the Trick Room. I'm going to go for a Scald right here. And uh, I actually do knock out the Manchow with the Slowbro, which made me really happy. He uh, Last time him and I battled, it was, a really, it was a really bad battle because I didn't think I could beat him. So I kind of sort of, I want to say I stalled him out. That would be a fair assumption to say I stalled him out. I end up knocking out his Victini with the Scald. But I stalled him out with a uh, Mega... Mega Diancy, so he was kind of upset and worried. He wasn't really upset. He was more worried that I was going to do it again in this battle, but I didn't, so 
It was a fantastic battle. Probably one of the best battles that I've had so far in the LBA, and I'm really upset that he dropped out. But hopefully he'll be back next season. He's still around helping out Tyler with like all the scores and stuff like that. So that makes me really happy. Make sure that you guys go check out the LBA channel. He does do videos over there on Showdown. I don't know if he still does them. He did them before and they were amazing. If you could, talk him into uh, making his own channel because he really deserves to make his own. But I hope that you guys have an absolutely fantastic day. Make sure you hit a like on this video for me. I really do appreciate it. Also... Like I said earlier in the video, D-Train has been recording all of my battles for me, and it is the biggest help in the entire world. I cannot say enough how thankful I am that he has been doing all of this for me and really helping me out. It, it, it's fantastic. Thank you so much, D-Train, for all of your help, um, and I hope that you guys have an absolutely fantastic day. I will see you guys later. Bye.